Hi, my name is Will English, English Management Solutions. We are a QuickBooks Point of Sale Specialist, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the import feature inside the program to be able to quickly upload a bunch of products or be able to update them quickly. Let's say that we've received a spreadsheet from our vendor, or perhaps we are able to export a list of products from our previous point of sale system when we're switching over. So if we can get that information into Excel, it is very easy to get the information into point of sale. So let me show you a sample spreadsheet. You can see that at the top we have these headers, and these headers, as I'll show you, can be mapped to anything in QuickBooks point of sale. So it's not really important what the header information contains, just that the information is there. By the way, item number is something that is in QuickBooks point of sale. However, it's not required to be part of the spreadsheet. I'll show you a feature inside point of sale that will use the item number later. So to get started, all we have to do is be able to take and import this spreadsheet. Let me show you how to do that next. So to start the import process in QuickBooks point of sale, we click on the file menu and then under utilities, and then import. It steps you through a wizard here. We we'll click on next. So you can see not only can we update inventory items, but vendors and customers and item pictures. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to do inventory items and click on next. Now, this can be a little confusing. So the default template might be something that you would want to choose. However, the default template is a specific file in a specific location and so you would have to copy paste all of your information into that default template. We recommend using the custom file. Custom file gives you the ability to take any Excel spreadsheet and be able to import that. Now notice that it also says comma delimited file. While it is true that you can import a comma delimited file we have found it overly complex because the header information sometimes can get truncated or is very confusing to choose. So if at all possible, use Excel. And then vendor catalog is another choice, although I have not seen that used too often. So we're going to click on next. Here we go ahead and browse to the file that we want to import. That same one that I have is on my desktop. So I'm going to choose and click on open. And then if I have multiple worksheets, I want to choose the worksheet that I have. In this case, I only have one. And data starts at row two. So if I had a spreadsheet that was exported from another point of sale system, and perhaps the data, the actual contents of the item records started on row five or six, I would simply choose that. In this case, it does start on row two. And then down below here is add or select a mapping. This is really the magic of the import process. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to add new. And then it brings up a mapping here. So basically, I do need to map it. So items. And then each of these rows on the left are fields that are contained within QuickBooks point of sale. The rows on the right are my spreadsheet. So if I click on the drop down, you can see item number, item name. Notice that item name is a required field. So in my spreadsheet, I actually just called it item. So this is where the mapping takes place. Department name, I have listed as department. Item description, item description. Now attribute and size are two fields that make up what's called a style. So I'm going to go ahead and map those. I will do another YouTube on the benefits of using styles. But in this case, I'm going to say that my attribute is my color, because that's what it's listed in in my spreadsheet. And then my size is my size. Average unit cost is my cost field here. Regular price, list out regular price, etc., etc. Vendor name. 
So once I've mapped all of my fields, by the way, I don't have to map every single field here. And so if I don't have it in the spreadsheet, that's fine. I'll show you what we'll do with that later. I also have, if I have additional fields, I can say show all available fields. It asks me to save it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see that there's significantly more fields that I can map. So therefore, anything that I have in the spreadsheet, I can go ahead and map to that. So I'll click on Save again and click on Next. This is an important concept for you to get a hold of. So what this is telling us here is that if the item already exists in QuickBooks Point of Sale, what do I want to do with the import record? First of all, which field should I use to determine if its rec record already exists? So in this case, I did not have the UPC, but I did have the item number. That's where, if I'm wanting to update records, I would export them out of point of sale. I would make the changes in Excel, and then I would choose to import using the item number as the field to determine if it's a duplicate. Next up is, what do I want to do when a duplicate record is detected? This first selection will drive you crazy if you say prompt and let me decide. If you have 200 rows in your spreadsheets, it will prompt you for all 200 rows. So we do not recommend using that ever. Keep existing data and discard import data. I don't understand why that option's there. It makes no sense to me. If I'm trying to import, why would I want to discard the data? And then these two are the most critical. So replace existing data with import data, ignoring blank fields or including blank fields. So what that means is that if I did not map the field, the import is going to skip over it. If I didn't map the field, it's actually going to overwrite it. So in general, I choose ignoring blank fields. And then the last is that department is a required field inside of point of sale. Therefore, if I don't have department in the import record, I can choose which department that I want to be able to import this. Go ahead and click on next. It now is reading the records to see if I'm going to have any issues. I have 158 items. I have none to be added because I exported this spreadsheet out of point of sale and therefore I'm simply updating. No records found, so yay. And the most important thing to consider here is to back up company data before importing. It is the default setting. You just want to make sure that it's actually checked there because the worst thing that can happen is that you do the import and then you realize that you've mapped something wrong or something's messed up. And if you don't have a backup to go back to, bad things will happen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on import back up to the default location and it's doing my backup and now the import. You can see no records were added, 158 records were updated and close. It is just that simple to be able to import into QuickBooks Point of Sale. Again, this feature is most useful if I have a list of products that I perhaps received from a vendor or if I have a list that I've exported out of an existing point of sale system that I want to import in, or if you want to make mass updates to QuickBooks point of sale. For example, let's say that I want to change all of the department records for a number of products. I can go ahead and do that very quickly and easily. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any other questions about QuickBooks point of sale, or if you're looking to purchase QuickBooks point of sale products or hardware, please use the contact information listed to get a hold of us. Thank you.